for the vision is for an appointed time. Oftentimes we wonder, God, what do you have for me? But it goes on to say, if you write the vision and make it plain, he will do just what he said. And as we continue to walk through this journey of life, we need to think about writing the vision, making it plain. So he will do just what he said. Write the vision. Come on, give God a praise.
to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the one who I know for sure has done in my life the things that he said that he was going to do uh, especially pretty much most of the things that I've asked for to uh, the pastor of this house and her absence the illustrious Reverend Dr. Victoria V. Goggins, we thank her again for uh, allowing me to stand here uh, upon this sacred desk as which she has been appointed over to expel uh, the gift, that I would call it, that the Lord gave me. Uh, I'm compelled to say uh, uh, even like some of those in the Bibles who gave excuses saying, God, I can't. I, I mumble or God, I can't. I, but we all said, here I am, send me. So if you have a gift, don't hide it up under a bush. And for those who know me and, and I, know how much I love being an introvert. That's just who I am. Uh, though the gift that he gave me, I cannot hide. Though I've tried under a bush. So if you can sweet, sweet. If you can sing, sing. If you, got, you can play an instrument, play an instrument. If, if, if everybody, if you got hands and all you can do is sit and clap, clap. Be the best hand clapper Officers and members of this church, I, I thank you for the work that you, you do. Uh, to my family, my wife, I'm not a rapper, but I think this rhymes to the one who prayed and stayed with me over all these years. I love you and I appreciate all that you do and sacrifice as a as I extend my gift uh, to my children and my grandchildren. I love you. Uh, getting the stutter right now, so let me do it in true George Odom's fashion. To the roof, to the walls, to the floors and to the doors, I greet you all with the love first taught to me by my grandmother, Edith May Odom, and that is with the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Turn to your Bibles if you can with me uh, and let's look at what is attributed to Moses in the book of Psalms verses chapter 91 and we're going we're gonna to read the whole thing. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. King, King James Version. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and Him 
will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the newsome pestilence. He, he shall cover thee, underline that, with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckle. Buckle me up, Lord, keep me safe. Thou shalt not be, afra shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the arrow that flieth by day nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth in noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the has made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lions and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet, because he has set his love upon thee. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. Ain't it good to know God knows your name? Do you know his name? He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. If you can, pray with me for the next five minutes on the subject. I'm covered. I'm covered. I'm covered. Pray after me and say, Lord, I thank you for the covering. In Jesus' name, amen. For some reason I can't get past those two words. I'm, I'm, I'm covered. If, you, if you're grown, grown, and you think about some of the things that you've been through, the words, I'm covered, should resonate within you like nothing else. I'm covered. I'm covered. Say it to yourself. Or say it out loud. I'm, I'm, I'm covered. Say it like you've been through something and you came out of it. I'm covered. Here in this pericope, of Paul that we read in Timothy and now Moses' and Psalms, we see that one thing is for certain, whether reading it in between the lines or print it clearly, prayer is a must. Whether you do it for yourself or someone else do it for you, prayer in the form of intercessory got to be done. Either way, in order for a covering to take place, to get to that secret place of the Most High, someone, somewhere, either on their knee, bent backwards, or laying prostrate, must whisper a word unto the Lord. Uh, I'm quiet in here. I'm by myself. Moses in his infinite wisdom and prolific or profound conversations with God uh, blesses us with the insight that we can take and glean from to bend God's ears to our words in fashion in which God will move. Basically, he gave us the blueprint of how to talk to God so he could move in our life. Can I keep it real for a moment? If you praying and nothing has happened, something ain't right. 
If you're in a prayer group or a circle and God ain't moved, if I was you, I'd put my finger in the air and say, excuse me, then I'll move to another circle. I, I, I fashion prayer, if you ever had the pleasure of go fishing with me, but I, I, I fashion prayer like you got to hold your lip right. If, if I miss a fish, most of the time I say, mm, I must not have been holding my lip right. It's a technique. So if God uh, uh, ain't moving, maybe, maybe we ain't prostrate or laid out enough, or maybe we ain't bent backwards right, or, or, or somebody's knees ain't touching the floor because my Bible tells me God hears the prayers of the righteous. So, so who in this circle ain't righteous? Whereas he ain't moved. I, I hear your pastor say, just keep looking straight ahead. Paul's immovable compassion for learning, which equals Moses' conversation, teaches us that our acts must be aligned with our doing. Men must always pray. Can I keep it real for another moment? You can be acting one way, but doing something else. All because you doing something don't mean you acting right. I, I acted like I was in church, but all the while I was doing something else. I, I, I'm in church, but I'm strolling through TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, and MySpace. Do they, do they still got MySpace? Well, you ain't strolling through MySpace, it's gone. I, I'm in church, but I'm gossiping about what I heard about Reverend Odom last night. I, I'm in church, but I'm checking out uh, what they got on on the outside instead of what they have on on the, on the inside. I, I, I'm in church, but I'm, I'm thinking about he need to hurry up because the game is coming on at 1 o'clock roll time. He tells us that we need to always pray. Pray when you're walking. Pray when you're sleeping. Pray when you're working. Pray on vacation. Pray when you're sad. Pray when you're happy. Pray when you're eating breakfast, lunch, dinner, or supper, as they called it back in the day. We must always pray. Am I right about it? Moses brought so much meaning to my life upon reading this pericope. It was as if the scales fell off my eyes. Though I've read this Passage and heard it many times before, but this time it was different. It, it, it was different this time because something was affecting me. Affecting with the A, not with the E. Have you ever seen folk or experienced something and you said to yourself, Lord, I hope that never happens to me? You, you may have said that because in the back of your mind, some of us may not have been as prayed up as we should be or prayed up at all. If something life-changing were to happen or if you had a close call moment, you wouldn't know what to do and be scared to call on Jesus, Jesus, Jesus because you haven't mumbled a word to him in a while. But sometimes the moment could be just too big and you're not prepared to handle it. Can I get a little closer to you if I could this morning? How many of y'all out there have children or plan on having children or, or, or just taking on again the responsibility of somebody. You can, show, you can raise your hand. Can I tell you that the words of Moses and Paul become more real to you if you're a parent and again just taking on a responsibility for anybody other than yourself? I tell you that if you ain't never prayed before have some kids and you will. Pray more than that little 15, 14 year old you who said, I ain't never going back to church you could ever imagine. Let me tell you a quick story. You know, I'm going to always have a story about my, my grandma. But let me tell you a quick story about covering from my grandmother. One day I went home to, to see her, and, and as usual, it turned to a pressure prophetic moment as she began to tell me this. She said, George, I saw you in a white car. And, you had a bad, bad wreck, but I spoke to God. Can I keep it real for another moment? 
<laughs> There's a difference between the way our elders went to God than how we do it today. And they spoke to God and told him exactly how and when to move. They went to God boldly. They, they, they would say, say stuff like, Lord, thou hast been over the dwelling place in all generations. B before the mountains were brought forth, or even thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. God, I don't need you to move now. I need you to move right now. God, do it right now. God, you said it in your word that if I'll ask in Jesus' name, it would be so, it would be done. They would say stuff like, God, if you could take the reins of my children's mind, that if you, when they get ready to go left, you turn them right, turn them around, God. God, I need you to do it right now. There's a difference. They spoke to God, but we are in the NIV version of God right now where we, we petition him, Heavenly Father. We got to get back to learn how to spoke to God. Anybody know what I'm talking about? She said, I, I, I spoke to God and I told him to let you live and not be home. I, I stood in a gap and I pray for you until to this day I can see it in my mind uh, 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 her shouting and praising God and, and, and clapping her hands until the palms became beat red uh, uh, grandmama's prayers rest and bent God's ear this happened way before cell phones and, and things like that I, I, I didn't tell anybody that just a couple of weeks before that I was in an accident in a white car I, I did, that did happen to me. And to amazement, I, when I was out the car, and the, 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 the ambulance and the fire and the, and the police people was there, and they asked, how did you get out this car? I said, I crawled out the back window. And then they showed me the car. The roof was bent in. There was no way I was able, or anybody was able to climb out no window. There was none left. The car was in a bald. And here to further astonishment, I got out, and I didn't have a scratch on me at all. My grandmama prayed for me. She had me on her mind. She took the time and prayed for me. I was covered, and I didn't even know it. I was covered, covered, and I didn't even know it. If you don't pray for your kids, if you don't pray for your grandchildren, then who will? Uh, here I am talking about when I grow up, I ain't never going to church again. Oh, I found out that it takes all of that in some more. I, 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 I tell you that to, if I try to hold this gift, it'll feel like Jeremiah said, fire shut up in my bone. It just won't leave me alone. I could have been blind, crippled, or crazy, but I was covered. You ain't here by circumstance. You here by happenstance. Somebody just happened to pray for you. Uh, let's get ready to get out. Well, now I said that I was in the driver's seat now. To fast forward a little bit. Yeah, he's here today. Uh, about a month ago or so, my son was too in a vehicle accident. And he called my, my wife's phone and all I could do was think about uh, everything that I just said before. All I could do was think about spiritually holding my lips right. Uh, the technique came into play. The spirit of shouting and renting Jesus, Jesus, Jesus practice came up because I was hoping that God could hear and answer me. 
if you, like I said, if you ain't never prayed, have a child. Have a child and if you can hear them in pain. All you can shout is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. But oh, thank God, Almighty, that I learned and I kept the words that my grandmother said that I'm covered. I, I, I'm so glad that I'm covered in my going in and I'm, and I'm covered in my going out. Uh, I, I'm so glad that I'm covered in the field and I'm, I, I'm covered in the house. Uh, I'm so glad that I'm covered on the highways and byways of this life. Uh, I'm so glad that I'm covered in the darkness and I'm covered in the light. I'm, I'm so glad that when I'm down, the cover picks me up and turns me around and places my feet on solid ground. I'm, I'm so glad that when I'm lonely, the cover wraps me and swaddles me in his loving arms. I'm, I'm so glad that when I'm worried about the cares of this old world that the cover swoops me up and carries me to the secret place of the Most High. I'm so glad that when I think about my children and my children's children that we are all covered. Covered, covered. Is there anybody here today that's so glad about the covering that took place over 2,000 years ago that looked into the day and stretched himself wide, hung up high, and whispered out to the crowd, Ah, that you covered her, and then he died. But early on a Sunday morning, unlike the temptations daddy on September the 3rd, he got up with all power in his hands and whispered to me again, You're still covered, but not only that you're covered, you're covered, covered by his blood. You're covered, covered by his love. You're covered, covered by his mercy. You're covered, covered by his grace. You're covered, covered by the Son. You're covered, covered by the Father. You're covered, covered by the Holy Spirit. Aren't you glad that this day you recognize and realize that you are covered? I'm covered. I'm covered. I'm covered. Because I'm covered, my children are covered. Because I'm covered, my grandchildren are covered. Because I'm covered, the ones that I don't see from generation to generation. Because they'll be able to say, my great, 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 great grandfather, not Reverend Dr. Heater, but George Odom prayed. That's it, that's all I got. This has been the First Day of Me Church Manassas broadcast of our Sunday morning worship service. We are so excited and honored that you chose to be a part of our extended E family and pray that you have been truly blessed by today's powerful message. However, please know that you are always welcome and encouraged to join us in person every Sunday at 10 o'clock a.m. right here at 10313 South Grand Avenue in Manassas, Virginia. Otherwise, join us again virtually next Sunday at 10 a.m. on our live stream broadcast or anytime after that at www.famechurch.com or you can find us on Facebook and YouTube just by searching at First AME Church Manassas. We also ask that you continue to support this ministry with your generous tithes and offerings through PushPay by texting Fame Church to 77977. You can give online at famechurch.com slash giving or just mail your contribution to First AME Church Manassas, 10313 South Grand Avenue, Manassas, Virginia, 20110. Once again, thank you for joining us today for the First Day of Me Church Manassas Sunday morning worship service. Reverend Dr. Etoria V. Goggins, pastor. Loving like Christ, living like Christ, leading like Christ. Be blessed.